What's up, Long Beach? Welcome back to LBPostSports.com. It's JJ and Mike. And it is homecoming week in the Moore League as Long Beach Jordan travels to Long Beach Milliken as the Rams get their homecoming on. Homecoming's making me dizzy right now. Well, it's a time for band alums, cheer alums, heck, football alums. Everybody's back in town to watch the Rams uh, and, you know, the pomp and circumstance. Oh, always nice. Always. Lovely. These two teams both coming off losses last week. Hoping to get a win this week that can kind of jettison them into a playoff run. Yeah, hard to decide who's got a, a bigger must-win situation tonight. But the biggest story, obviously, we talk about it all year, is the injuries. That's the entire starting backfield for the Jordan Panthers in street clothes. And Pauly Slater's also wearing shorts. So, Alden Darby, best athlete on the field, going to be touching the ball every time for the Rams. Can you say silver lining? Yeah, however, the passing game, not really on and Michael Mayotte makes him pay on their second passing attempt with the pick at the 30 yard line. Get up, big man! They can celebrate too, can't they? Yeah, but you gotta watch your knees in the Moore League this season when you're jumping. Jordan had some success running the ball to the outside or throwing it to the outside as Smith takes this one to the sideline. They get the ball down to the two. It looks like Darby on second down saves the touchdown, cutting Jason Logo Logo down, but on third down, Logo Logo gets him back and punches it in. Jordan's up 7 0. Huge start for Jordan, struggled offensively since losing John Timu. They needed that boost. Speaking of Timu, Coach Scott Meyer said after the game, Alden Darby is Timu-esque. He was doing it with his feet all night, and he could also do it with his arm. Here, finding number 17, Derek Mirless, and then of course... Yeah, he can run pretty well, too. Woo! That's the most vicious cut, man. It's just one cut straight up the gut for a touchdown. Going the other way, here's a weird play. He was trying to find Smith on the, down there, but it was ended up being like a, a high fly ball to right field. But he also was able to, uh, to find Smith on this one right here. And then again, Nixon to Smith. A great throw and a great catch down on the one. The flag was actually for defensive pass interference. He so said Nixon, it wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't. And Nixon just punches it in right there on the sneak to give Jordan the 14-7 lead. After a three and out, they get the ball back and pound that rock. Just get behind those big boys up front. Logo, logo, getting it going. Huge matchup on the lines and the trenches in this game. Jordan getting it done early. And yeah, they actually got the, got the, got the stop for Milliken. Uh, kicked a field goal. So 17-7 going into halftime. Cue the fireworks. <laughs> there were actually more fireworks in the Milliken locker room. Coach Diego challenged his team to come out and show what they got and the second half turned into the defensive slugfest that we thought the entire game was going to be. Sounds like some locker punching you're talking about there in that halftime speech. Milliken really did a good job pinching on the inside and forcing Jordan to run to the outside where guys like Mata and Adams and Taylor were able to make the plays. And the punts were obviously a big deal too because when the defenses are playing that well, you're going to punt the ball a lot. And the first two punts of the second half this was, the, was the changing. You the don't game. see this in high school very often. You a don't. punt down at the one yard line. That is huge in a high school football game. In, on the first play, it looks like Adams gets him right there for the, for the safety, but ball just on the edge. It looks like Mata might have the safety here too. However, again, on the one yard line. So you got a punt backed up. And I'm not even going to cut this clip. You can just watch it from beginning to end. Give Dar Darby a chance on the 40. You know what's going to happen. Untouched to the tilt. Number two. Coach Meyer said after the game, that was the change. That, that, that was the point where Jordan lost their footing and they could never find it again. And you knew when that happened it was going to be Darby too. Like you said, best, most athletic player on the field. Yep, so with eight minutes left, the Rams get the ball back. Down three, but on the first play. Darius, this... Go ahead, touchdown might come in handy. The handyman can. 39 goes 60, 4 6. And the sideline's pretty excited about it, too. Look at this. Yeah! Aww. So back on the other side, Milliken still dominating defensively as Adams gets that one right there. Nixon just a little bit off, can't find the jet going down the sidelines. And then this play pretty much told the story of the second half for the Panthers. Kind of a weird one. He does find Smith. But Smith ends up coughing it up, and who would come up with it? Of course, Darby. Jordan had five punts, one fumble, and a safety late in the game. That was their second half, and Darby, of course, was able to run out the clock here. Again, they added that safety, but it would not matter because the Rams take it 23-17, and they are set to run to the playoffs in the morning. Yeah, these Rams have set themselves up early as a legitimate playoff contender. Big win over Jordan.